You can make $1,000 in a day cleaning solar panels, and in this video, my buddy Tim is going to lay out the complete guide on everything you need to know in order to get started making money cleaning solar panels. Everything from licensing and insurance, equipment, pricing, how to do the job, how to get customers, and if you hang out until the end, Tim is going to share the biggest mistake that he made with the solar panel cleaning business so that way you can avoid it. But if you want an even deeper look on how to start this business, be sure to check out the Solar Panel Cleaning Academy, which will be the first link in the comment section and the description. In it, Tim has over six hours of in-depth training and resources on how he scaled his solar panel cleaning business so that way you can cut the learning curve. And if you need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, or collecting payments all for free, check out QuotaQ on the App Store or Google Play Store, or you can try any paid tier of QuotaQ for $1 right now at myquotaq.com, which will be the second link in the comment section and the description. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. First things first, I always like to cover licensing and insurance because I feel like that's a good place to start with regards to any kind of business. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's kind of tricky with solar panel cleaning. It's still kind of new industry. And there's not a lot of boxes that can be checked off that have solar panel cleaning. So first thing that I did, um, you don't really need a contractor's license. Now, again, everything that I have is only from my experience. Everything that I've done is purely from my experience from where I live. And I live in California. So basically what I did was I went down to my city hall. I pulled out a business license from my city hall. And, um, you know, everything that goes along with building, getting a, a business license that way. and. Uh, the way that I was able to set my business up in order to actually get insurance since I was cleaning solar panels. And like I said, there was no boxes to check uh, for solar panel cleaning. I set up the business as a handyman slash window cleaning service because a lot of the tools are the same as the window cleaning. But let me tell you, the solar panel cleaning is a lot more lucrative. So if you're in California, um, I would suggest set up a business license, um, get an LLC formed. Go get your DBA at the bank, uh, you know, a business account, and um, you could run from there. You do need to get insurance, though, uh, so make sure that you get insurance. That way you're protected. Now, if you're working by yourself, uh, you won't need insurance like uh, workman's comp or anything. You just need, uh, you know, liability, general liability insurance. That way, if you break a window or something like that, the homeowner is covered. So, uh, but if you're not in California, I do suggest that you just go down to City Hall um, ask down there and see, but there is no special license or permit for solar panel cleaning. Um, one other permit that I like to tell everyone to get when they are considering doing this, considering you're not going to have a lot of clientele starting at right off the gate. Um, same as I did. Um, a lot of my customers that first came in from knocking on doors. So, uh, where I live, you have to get a home improvement sales permit. That way it could be knocking on doors. It's really cheap. Uh, it's a I think it's like a couple hundred bucks. They do a background check on you. And it's just, um, you can use that as a marketing advantage as well. You know, like, you know, I'm certified. I have a permit background check. That way, if you, you know, that's to prevent people because you're going to be going into people's homes certain times. So you just want to protect yourself in all ways. So with that being said, if you are in California, get your HIS permit, which is like a door-to-door -door sales permit. Um, you want to get insured. Uh, I like to use Next Insurance, but there's a lot of other insurance companies out there. Uh, make sure you get a business license. Uh, I recommend you set up an LLC and then you're pretty much good to go from there. Okay, beautiful. If you guys need a free insurance quote, we'll be sure to leave it uh, down below as well so you guys can get that. The bad thing about California is there's so much like red tape around everything. I've heard like for people wanting to start a pressure washing business, they have to do like four years under like an apprenticeship or something like that. There's nothing like that with regards to solar panel cleaning though, right? You know, I'm going to bite my tongue, but not yet. You know, there, I mean, I'm not, not to say that there won't be something like that in the future, but for me, I, I started off doing the residential and kind of moved into the industrial part of it. And the industrial part is where you really get your recurring customers with the, and the big accounts. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's definitely lucrative. The way I like to put it in California is they kind of take away your rights and then they'll make you pay for a permission to do it you know so it's really they just want your money just give them the money you're gonna make it back you won't miss it i promise because it, you, you can make it back you'll make it back quick the, investing into a solar panel cleaning business is probably the easiest way to make your money back it at the worst case scenario you'll break even we got a lot of stuff to cover in this one tim uh licensing and insurance out of the way the next thing i kind of want to segue to is uh the equipment so what equipment do we need to get started can you kind of walk us through like maybe a beginner setup and then into you know a little bit more pro yeah for sure because there is definitely different routes you want to go so i did touch on this a little bit earlier depending on the route you want to go whether you want to go residential or commercial slash industrial um the tools do matter and will make a difference. Um, also in the area that you live, 
will also make a difference. Because Justin, I know you live over in Louisiana and you guys get a lot of moss and algae. What's that stuff that grows on the roof called? Yeah, algae. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, I don't know. Mike has the specific term. Yeah, Mike sure. always says the 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 actual Gloria capsa magma. There you go. So you guys got a lot of Floria capsa magma that grows out there. We don't really get that stuff. So you could kind of go with a lot of the basic tools out here. But I know that the industry is spreading right now, uh, considering that solar is spreading. So basic setup. I actually got a couple brushes here. So this is what I started off with, dude. I had no idea. Well, I take it back. I actually started off with the window mop. It has a squeegee part on the back of it. And then just like a pad, like a removable microfiber mop pad on the front. That's what I started using at first. And I quickly realized that I was going to be up there all day. I think I had a 40 panel, I think maybe 40, maybe 50 panel job. And I quickly realized like, this is not the way to do this because I was having to rinse it off and then mop it with that window mop. But pretty much you get one or two swipes and that window mop is completely filthy and you have to rinse it off. So I learned my lesson. Window mop, not really the way to go. Good tool to have because you could also do windows, you know, mark up or uh, upsell them, maybe do some windows and stuff. So it's a good tool to have in the arsenal. I start off with one of these. This is like an $8 Home Depot brush or Lowe's, whichever place. All of them have it. It's a wide angle wash brush. It's like an RV wash brush or like a car wash brush. It doesn't, uh, this particular one is actually set up for water to go through and feed out, but I never use that feature. Well, basically what I do is I pre-rinse. I had a helper with me and they would just lightly mist them as I was scrubbing. Now this would collect some dirt. And as you can even see here on the edge, there's some dirt, but it's really simple. Especially if you have a helper, you just kind of, you're washing the panel, you one panel, have him rinse it off, hit that panel real quick one more time. And then it's almost guaranteed it'll be clean every time. But this is a lot of elbow grease. So when you get to those jobs, there's like 40, 50 panels. And you're going to want some heavier equipment. The big tall houses, too. There's a lot of houses where you have to get on the roof just to get on to another roof. And for me and my crew, I don't like them carrying up a bunch of um, equipment, like a bunch of cumbersome stuff. Some of the guys that I do see that like to do this, they're bringing up multiple hoses. They're bringing up pumps and all that. And really in, in the end game, you want to get over there. You want to get over there. You want to get the job done. You want to get it quick. You want to get out of there and move on to the next job because that's how you're really going to be extremely lucrative. So you can start off with a $10 brush from Home Depot. Now, the one thing that I will say about getting the Home Depot Lowe's types of brushes, the RV brushes, is the thread is not is um, a standard thread. Now, when you go to start buying the upgraded brushes, so when you go to start buying like upgraded brushes, like water fed brushes, see these have jets inside of them. And I had, this is like a Jerry rig run that I brought in just to show exactly what, what you'll run into. So when you get stuff from Home Depot anywhere over here, it's all standard threads. Now, when you buy these water fed brushes, which have the jets on the inside and they spray with a little more pressure than just like a water hose and it really speeds up your clean time. Um, this is all metric. This is a different thread system. So you can't just go buy like an extension pole. It's not going to work. You need to buy the whole setup. So this one came with the with the with the setup, but um, this one ended up breaking. And then I tried to order the parts, so I had to kind of make my own conversion kit here. Works great. So this was like my first upgrade because I wasn't really sure. And when I first started, I didn't have a lot of money. I wanted to start with zero and just build up. I didn't want to pull any outside money into the business because it was I just wanted to see what I could do with it. So then after that, we got a big. Um, a big solar field and had like 1100 panels on it and this wasn't going to cut it so we had to bring our own water and stuff like that so we upgraded to a mechanical brush but there was one in between that one and this and you can get these still so this has boar's hair on the inside so this is a soft nylon on the outside and then on the inside there's a stiff boar's hair it has more jets and they're actually finer and more powerful jets and everything's just quick snap on these water fed poles so i got this one this one's just in the inventory so this one is like a pure water power you can still get these however i think you got to go to um, window cleaning resource now window cleaning resource bought these guys out so these are still available they work great but again this is more of a window cleaning brush however it will work and it's it, it works well but you got to put a little more elbow grease, grease into it now when you get into the commercial stuff you're going to want to upgrade your equipment and you're going to want to get some mechanical brushes. And what I mean by mechanical brushes is they hook up to pumps and uh, you got something similar to like a pressure washing pump that's pushing out a lot of water. 
And what happens is the water pressure will rotate the brush. So a lot of times on these industrial jobs, they're not getting them cleaned as often as they should. And just being that it's in an industrial area, you have a lot of different types of chemicals, exhaust, all kinds of different stuff that land on those, not to mention pigeons and stuff start to live up on those flat roofs. So they collect a lot of dirt. And when you're doing those industrial jobs, you're talking 11, 2000, 3000 panels, huge jobs take you, you know, like a week to do and stuff like that. So I have done an 1100 panel job with literally this brush right here, this Frankenstein one, it's on YouTube. You can see it. We got it done. We made a bunch of money, but I'll tell you, I was sore and it was a lot of work. So uh, we upgraded to mechanical brushes for the fields now. That definitely covers the brushes. I know another important thing about solar panel cleaning is the water. And so maybe you can kind of tell us a little bit about why the water is important first and foremost and, and what we can do to kind of get the right water. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's the next thing. That's one of the most important parts is the water. So I get asked a lot, can you just use tap water? You cannot use tap water. Now, if you have, you want to get a, I should have brought my water tester in here. So they have a little water tester that you could put and you want to check the parts per million. And it, what it does is it checks the dissolved solids in the water. So if you're down below three to two and your tap water, go ahead, use the tap water. You'd be totally fine. However, most residential homes and even commercial are even a lot higher is not. So you have to filter your water. You have to make it like a soft water. So there's different ways to do it. When I first started out, I used a DI, uh, uh, it's a deionizing machine. Basically it has resin that pulls out all of the minerals and anything that's in the water to make it a, to make it a pure water because you can't put anything but pure water on the panels because it'll leave calcium deposits. One thing that that does is it reduces the efficiency of production on those panels. Second thing it does is it can void the warranty on the panel. So by cleaning the panels with hard water, you could literally be doing your customer a disservice. So you have to use filtered out water, DI or RODI. RO stands for reverse osmosis. And that's a little bit of overkill on solar panel cleaning. So if you can't afford to get set up with the RODI machine, a reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis, <laughs> reverse osmosis and uh, deionized water. They have combo units, which runs it through three, it's called a three-stage system. So it'll run it through three stages, two stages, RODI, and then it puts it through a membrane. So you have pure clean water coming out. That way, when the water dries off, there's no water spots, no water spots, and there's no risk of voiding the warranty. So when you're doing residential, you could totally get away with just getting one of those car wash you see them online all the time like pure power it's got two blue tubes that come down and they have all the resin in them that will work that'll work up to about a hundred gallons depending on the the ppm reading at the tap so if the tap is higher you might get less so around here we're looking at around seven to ten as our our parts per million the reading on our total our tds reading for our water so i get about a hundred gallons of pure water running through that system before i need to change the resin now if you're up above that obviously you're going to get less but what i've noticed is i could do anywhere from eight to ten houses on one of those resins and it does get expensive but when you're starting off that is the best way to go because you don't want it. the three-stage system is three to five thousand dollars for something like that so until you're sure that you're really wanting to get into this i would recommend going with the di just a DI system on some wheels. And then you can start upgrading from there once you kind of understand what the DI is doing. Now, the three stage is better in more ways than one. One, it's cleaner water and you're using the water more efficiency, efficiently. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you're getting your water is you will need pumps. They call them booster pumps and they're fairly inexpensive. They're anywhere from 50 and they can go up to like $500. What happens is when you take tap water from the house, and you run it through these filters, it loses a lot of the pressure. So you have to boost the pressure back up in order for it to spray out of these jets on these, on these in order to push the dirt off. Otherwise, you got to sit there cleaning off or you're just leaving streaks. So water is important. And then when you're getting up into the really big fields, you just want to bring in your own water. So you might have a setup in your shop where you're just cleaning the tap water on demand, filling up tanks, and then just uh, delivering the tanks on site in a truck and then working off the truck with the pressure washer on the truck serving as the pump to pump the water out so it just really depends which way you want to go but if it's something you want to do residentially you can get away with just those di car wash and if you want to go 
look real professional and have more efficient water in the beginning, I would recommend a three stage. And then obviously if you're going into uh big industrial shit, I, I would, uh, in, industrial type jobs, I would recommend to go ahead and get a tank and get a whole truck built. Tim, there's no cursing on this channel. I just, I, I know I slipped out there. <laughs> I just get it. Oh, okay. Excellent. And that's one of the things that we go deep on in, in the uh, training that I was showing you guys first thing in the comment section. I know it's a lot of info. It's a lot of info, but in the course, it's all broke down real easy to understand. It makes a lot of sense. Right, right, right. So if any of that was confusing, like I said, check out the training. Um, it, just because it, it's a lot of info with regards to the setup and you wouldn't think so. You think like, Oh, it's just water. Like I'm just going to put water on them. And Tim, I think, that's probably one of the big, you know, maybe competitive advantages with regards to like your customer that might be like, oh, well, I'll just clean them myself. Well, they don't have that kind of like water system in place, right? So is that kind of a good selling point? Yeah, absolutely. You just you just got to educate them. And you know this just with any any service that you sell, you know, you're really your job is to educate them. So you can just tell them, oh, yeah, you absolutely could. But I would be aware that make sure you do this and make sure you do this. And, and then at that point, they're just kind of like, Oh, wow. You know, like, okay, I'll just pay you to do it because it's going to cost them double to get all the tools prepared and everything. So okay. it's really an education process. Me, Tim, how much there. did it cost you to just get started in it? If you don't mind, I know you kind of started like bare bones a little bit with regards to some of the equipment that you were using. So like, what's like that bare bones kind of uh, price that we can get in the business for? I mean, the biggest purchase, like if you want to start out bare bones, the biggest purchase that it's going to set you back, it's going to be the filter, the DI filter and the resin. So I would recommend get the DI filter, probably run you. I haven't looked at them probably around four to five hundred dollars. Um, you're looking at if you get depending on which one you get, but um, four to five hundred dollars for that. And I would automatically just get replacement refills, which I think are about one hundred and fifty bucks. So where are we at? About six, seven hundred bucks. So probably about eight hundred bucks, you could be on the road running, and that's not including like all the licensing stuff. You just want to get out and kind of do your uncles, your aunties, and your neighbors or whatever. You know, a few hundred bucks, get that water system cleaned up, and then I mean, you're cooking after that. You do need ladders and stuff, but like you know, like you preach on your channel, and I've said on my channel before, it's like I'm sure you know somebody that's got a ladder to get you going, right? Absolutely. I mean, one way or another, if you really, if it's something you really want to do, you're going to find a way to do it. And so yeah. uh, that's something I like to preach as well. Just like find a way to make it happen. Um, Tim, how do we actually do the job? Like, obviously it seems pretty self-explanatory, right? Like get the water set up, run the water through the brush and then just brush the panels until everything comes clean. Is there anything else that, you know, is important with that process? Um, so like I was, I said it a little bit earlier, it's really in a technique and everybody's going to have to kind of develop your own technique, but like, the way that I do it, it's because it's hard because when they're wet, they look clean regardless if they're still dirty or not. So my best advice to give you, I mean, and it is as simple as like you said, you're just you're literally just scrubbing the dirt off, you know, with water and a brush. So my biggest advice I could give is get up there, just do it just like with anything. You're not you're not going to break, you know, you're not going to break anything. Make sure that you're not there's nothing on your brush that could scratch the panels. Cause there is like a real delicate film on the top that like, if you had a bolt or something stick out or it wasn't the right angle as you were brushing, you could scratch it. Uh, but really my best advice is to kind of come up with a pattern to clean the panel. So when I was first starting out, I would like to, let me use something as an example here, maybe this pad of paper here. So you got to kind of come up with a pattern and just do that. just like, it's a religion, right? So let's say that this was one panel. This was one panel and I'm standing up here looking down at the panel because, you know, you don't want to be below the panels because you're going to get soaking wet. So what I like to do is I start here. I do half. I go up and down, up and down, up and down. I do half and then I rinse it and then I come down and I do the bottom half and then I rinse it and then I'll just come real quick and then I'll do a big, long run. Make sure I'm overlapping all the way and then I'll rinse it. And every because you don't know the problem, the tricky part with solar panel cleaning, why I'm saying this is the best tactic is you won't know that you missed a spot until they're dry so you could like do all your 10 20 panels take you probably 30 minutes should take you less but let's say it takes you 30 minutes takes you 10 minutes to get the gear and get off the roof you look back up to take your after picture and you see just one giant spot that you missed so second piece of advice is try to start in a way and do it in a, in a pattern to where the last ones are starting to dry as you're getting ready to pack up your gear and don't throw off your equipment or hand it down to your helper until 
you're 100% sure you're not going to have any drops. Cause I did that so much in the beginning, be like, all right, let's get out of here. Let's get to the next one. You get down, you're like in the truck. Oh, I got to take a before an after picture, go to take a picture and you just see all the streaks that you miss. So it is as simple as wiping it off, but come up with some kind of system and just stick to that system. Um, as far as making sure that they're clean before you get down. I like I it. So oh. kind of similar to washing a car in, in the same way as like you can't really tell if it's clean until after the car has dried, of course. So uh, you want to make sure you have that pattern. Dude. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. I was just agreeing with you. I, I just and I love the way that you kind of have that built in place to where you do the half, do the other half and then do the whole. So that way it kind of just mitigates any of that uh, happening. Yeah. OK, sweet. So, so, Tim, we talked about a lot of equipment, right? How to do the job, um, licensing and insurance. Let's kind of get into how do we get those customers really focus in kind of like how do we get those beginning customers and then take those and maybe try to build the business from there? Dude, the best way it is go knock on some doors. And what's cool about solar panels, you can just drive down the street and be like, oh, man, their panels are filthy. You know what I mean? So right. you're going to get a lot of no's. You got to be OK with. But knocking on doors is the best way because a lot of people aren't thinking about it. Um, there's a little more, more and more people are becoming aware of it because a lot of people, the common belief is like, oh, well, rain, rain will clean my solar panels. And like you mentioned with cars, like, well, does a car get cleaned when it rains? Right. No, it looks worse, really. And the way the the, the panels are kind of at an angle, it'll like rain. So all the dirt will get pushed down to this bottom lip and then it'll get dirty and then it'll rain and all that dirt gets pushed down. So you can start to see the dirt build up. But really, knocking on doors is the first way to get started because once you get that first job, then it's like easy from there because you could just show them the before and after pictures. And then after that, I mean, all of the tactics are the same with anything. The best way is door to door, you know, wrap your truck, get some kind of sign on your on your truck, on your car. The bandit signs work. It all works. But once you get some before and after pictures going, say maybe like three to five jobs in the bank. Um, oh, before I go to digital, what I do want to say is if you knock on the door and you get somebody to say yes, immediately go to all of the neighbors. Like if you're on that street, you've already got, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like social credibility in the neighborhood. They're like, and I believe, trust me, they've already seen you up there. So they're already kind of thinking about it. They're like, what is he doing up there? He's cleaning the solar panels. It's already in their head, right? Well, if Joe Schmo across the street's doing it. Well, I probably should do mine too. So it's really beneficial. Even if you don't have time, just go to the either neighbor. But if you're out there getting started, I'd go down that whole entire street. And we were able to get a whole entire subdivision just by doing that right off the gate. And that's kind of what lit the fire was like, oh, I'm going to tell my neighbor. And that neighbor told the other neighbor. And then we did like a little rewards program in the beginning. So I said, hey, if you give me another customer, I'll give you $20 off your next cleaning. And at the time, we were only charging hundred dollars for small. Like if you had 10 panels, it was a hundred bucks. And this lady had 10 panels. So I was like, Hey, if you give me another customer, I'll literally give you $20 off for every customer you get for me. So I ended up going back and cleaning her panels for free several times. Cause she just kept adding on customers for me. And then, you know, every customer is different. Some customers only need you to come out once a year, but some people live near like a freeway or near an airport or near like an industrial zone where you're coming out about every six months. And then you got some customers where the solar panels are on the front of their multi-million dollar house and they don't like dirty solar panels. Just they don't like their dirty cars parked out front. They're paying it purely out of just having it clean just so it looks looks good. So th those are all like the homegrown boots on the ground kind of tactics, which which they all work. The next way to do it is once you get those pictures and some and some things to show your work and some testimonials and some reviews go to facebook man i swear people hate on facebook but i'm telling you if you get your ad set up just right on facebook and you get a little video or some before and after pictures start running some kind of promotion on facebook now my advice to a lot of people cuz a lot of people make the mistake of just running 20% off or whatever I don't like to discount anything, right? I don't even say anything. I just say, hey, you know, book now, you know, just make it look like it's on sale, but there is no sale. Make sure once you get your ads all set up, you can start to run, but you also want to include on your Facebook page, just helpful information, you know, hey, did you know X, Y, Z, you know? So that that's really helpful. Get your Facebook page set up and don't just run promotions, man. Offer some free 
value or free advice or anything, just some facts about solar panels. And I've, I've seen that that's been really beneficial because you're already kind of giving them something. And then if somebody's like coming to your channel to learn how to do it themselves, they kind of get invested with you. And they're like, you know, I'm just going to have him come do it. And now you got a friendship and it's just cool. So Facebook, I'm telling you, kills. And then obviously get to get your business page set up on Google, which is a lot harder nowadays than it used to be. And um, Google's tricky because they're constantly changing. I know recently they made a change where they're not running off cookies anymore. So there's been a lot of scrambling and um, I'm still trying to figure that out. But um, get it set up and those reviews and everything you want to be on the map and put solar somewhere in your company name make sure that solar's in there because that's just good that's just good uh, keywords you know good SEO right there uh actually within this training me and tim kind of go through uh the ad strategy that we implemented for him within his first month we had done like ten thousand dollars yeah. just from facebook and so like yeah that's one of the biggest you know things within this course obviously there's there's a bunch of other great stuff but even if you just took the the ad strategy from this that we were running oh it's yeah i mean that the ad strategy is like there's so much good stuff in this course right but the ad strategy alone pays like whatever the course costs you're gonna get it out of just the ad strategy and then there's so much other helpful stuff in that course it's crazy wish right. i had that course when i was started out man man i was streamlined everything for me and instead of making all the mistakes the you know, only making... the only thing that works better for facebook ads uh, with with this ad strategy is painting like like solar works incredibly well but if you guys have a painting business tim do you remember that like we were oh getting, dude like, we got like works. 20, we got like 20 message conversions on like 25 dollars, and it was all like hey come paint my house come paint my living room like it was it was crazy stuff um yeah so anyway, just the strategy works. If you guys want to check it out first, like in the comment section description, obviously. Uh, so how to get customers, beautiful way, Tim, door to door in the beginning. You want to leverage that boots on the ground marketing, kind of sweat equity. And then after you've kind of established yourself, you know, utilize some of that money into some ad spend. Um, the next thing is how do we price these? So we get a job. Um, what, what does pricing kind of look like? So man, everybody wants like a black and white pricing, like, hey, it's this much, but it, it can't work like that. So a good baseline, when I started out, I started charging $10 a panel. So a 10, 10 panel job is $100. A 50 panel job was $500. Now, $500 on a 50 panel job doesn't really make sense for the customer because they may be paying less than that on their true up bill at the end of the year. The true up is basically... You use and you give and you use and you give all year long. At the end of the year, there's a balance either way. So you got to square up with the company that's providing you the power. So some people, that doesn't make sense for them. So it does get tricky really quick. But what I like to say is you do tiered pricing. So 10 to 20 panels, let's say nowadays, 10 to 20 panels, I would say $150. Your 21st panel, now you're at 200 bucks, right? So then you go, now you're at your... 30th panel now we're at 250 something like that and then once you get into the industrial it's more of like a flat rate right you kind of see how much water you're going to use you're going to see how many gallons of water it's going to take per and what you want to do is keep it to about a gallon and a half per panel now if you're running two and a half gallons per panel that's kind of inefficient but it's that's still fine and you want to get your cost per gallon down especially if you're doing those industrial jobs because you're paying for the water at that point um so really, you got to get your equipment dialed in before you could kind of figure out your pricing. If you're just going out there using elbow grease, there's not a lot of overhead, right? So you could charge $100 for a 10-panel job. That's competitive. Everyone's going to be mad at you that you're charging $100, but you got to get out there. You got to get your experience and get it going. But once you start getting a clientele, you got to raise your prices. You have to, especially with solar panel cleaning, because, man, your phone is going to be ringing off the hook. You're going to be scrambling around trying to get everybody in the schedule. So, I mean... There will come a point where you're going to have to raise your prices just because you just don't have time anymore. And by raising your prices kind of slows the phone calls down because when you're the cheap guy, they're calling. So don't be the cheap guy forever. But if you got to start out, that's what you got to do, you know. So and then you got to figure out what your overhead is. Once you pay your monthly insurance, what is my monthly insurance cost? What am I typically spending on gas per week? Because it's a lot of driving. You could do five, six, up to probably seven a day. If you're staying in a relatively close, like a 10 to 15 mile radius, I mean, you could do seven a day. It's a hundred bucks, 150 bucks a pop. I mean, you could make the money, but you got to factor all that stuff in. You got a helper. How much am I paying my helper? 
Now you got to put some aside for maintenance on the tools because tools don't last forever. They wear out after about 100, 100 jobs too. So these are just all the things. This is simple business stuff too. And if if you can't figure that stuff out, you probably shouldn't be starting a business. But you know, most people that are watching this right now kind of already have a lot of that sense in them and kind of understand that that's, that's uh, you got to figure, you know, there is no black and white true cost. I mean, you could Google it. What is the average solar panel cleaning cost in my area? And you'll get like different numbers. I mean, they range anywhere from five to $25 per panels. And that's because you have industrial jobs, you have commercial jobs. And the smaller the job, the more the panel. I'm not getting on anyone's roof, regardless of the size of roof. So set minimums, right? So single story house composition roofing, my minimums, $100, right? That's just to get on the roof, right? So how many panels you got? Okay, we'll do 150 bucks. Now we're talking, it's a two story roof. You got to get on the lower story to get on the top story. You got to set a minimum. How much is your insurance? Insurance is expensive, especially when you're climbing on roofs and stuff. So I wish I had an easy answer for that, but if you're just starting off, you're doing single story houses. Most of those homes, 11 to 1500 square feet, got about 10 panels on them, charge a hundred bucks. Do that for a few weeks, get some money in the bank, get some before and after pictures, raise your price, 20 bucks. If everybody's turning you down, okay, drop it down 10 bucks. Now you're at 110 and you just got to kind of play with it until you figure it out. And as you start getting better and getting bigger accounts, you just can charge more, you know, and your schedule's full. You're like, hey, I'm charge whatever you want at that point. I like the philosophy though, right? Like first things first, know your costs, know how much money you need to make, get the jobs, price yourself a little bit lower than the competition. And then once you kind of have everything under your belt, look at your numbers and base your pricing off your numbers. That's the good thing about Quote IQ. You guys can uh, check it out. Second link in the comment section description, but it has a close ratio, right? If you're closing your jobs, if you're closing, you know, over 60% of your jobs, you might be leaving some money on the table. And if you're closing under like 30%, then you're obviously charging too much or asking too much. So one of the benefits of just knowing those numbers and being able to price accordingly. So love that, Tim. Um, one other thing I wanted to add to this is like an addendum is, dude, competition is your friend, especially in the service business. Don't look at the other guys as like your enemy. Look at them as more of like an adversary, right? Like they're out there hustling. What can you learn from them? How can you help them out? So there's been times when I get jobs that I just can't take them. We're just too busy because I got paints. I do other stuff too, right? So I just can't take them. I got a few guys around here that I'll just kick them the jobs and vice versa. It goes back and forth. So especially with solar panel cleaning, it's a pretty cool community. And painting is like that too. A lot of the guys, we're all kind of pretty tight. And it's not because there's a lot of competition. And it really is when, when there is a lot of competition, it really is more beneficial just to kind of create a community. And everybody's out to help. I mean, there's plenty of panels dude there's i mean and there's only gonna be more because of the the new bills and stuff that are passing and the way everything's going so there's plenty of work there's plenty of panels there's plenty of money i mean you still want to be competitive right it feels good to you know get that big uh casino job or the hotel job or whatever but just don't don't i would you know that's it i just be cool to your competitors man because they can help you out a lot when you when you're, when you're not you never know. You never know. Another thing I want to kind of talk about is like, how long do these jobs typically take? Uh, you know, you'd mentioned you should be able to get it done in 30 minutes, but uh, can you kind of give us a time estimate? Um, so let's say for your average job, let's say it's an hour. I say probably on average residential, you're looking at an hour. Now, industrial, like I said, me and my partner, we did 1100 panels. I think it took us about three days. But granted, we were doing it by hand with this brush. You probably could have done something like that maybe in a day, day and a half, you know, with the mechanical equipment. But on average, you're looking at about an hour per job. And that's okay. including like showing up, pre-site inspection, meeting the customer, having them sign, you know, the terms of service, and then getting up on the roof and getting it done. Okay, beautiful. So we could do these pretty quick. That's that's super good. And then, you know, how much can we make in a day with a solar panel cleaning business? Whew. I think the most that we made on a two-man crew in like a six-hour day was $1,100. We literally took our kids to school, went out, made $1,100, came back and picked our kids up from school. Wow, that's incredible. But that's like, we could have done more if we didn't have to pick the kids up from school. Right. But that's why we really liked it because it was like, oh, this is a great... Cause it was during COVID kind of when we, when we are uh, just after COVID. So we started during COVID and then COVID ended and we kept it going. Right. And it was just like, man, this is like, 
this is the best job ever, you know, because it was amazing. You could just be out. And that's kind of what gave me the idea was during COVID, I had a lot of paint jobs fall through. And now this is a great upsell for me. And then it kind of led into window cleaning too. And those are things that I don't even have to do those because I have people I can send to go do it. And it's amazing, man. It's a great upsell, even if it, it runs as a standalone business, but it also works as an upsell depending on the person. I think that's one of the most beautiful parts about the business because that's kind of how you were running for a little bit, Tim. Like you you really like these jobs because they were quick. You were able to knock out a bunch of them, but then you could also be packed up and be back home by three if you wanted. Yeah, to, right? I could be running paint estimates, you know, between three and five, still be home for dinner. You know what I mean? It's amazing. It was great. Perfect, perfect. Okay, sweet. So you had mentioned upsells. I kind of want to talk about upsells. So, you know, when you're doing panel cleaning, I, there are some upsells that you can you can tackle on. So can you kind of talk to some of the things that you can upsell with this business? So there's a lot of upsells. Um, There's a lot of upsells that I didn't want to tackle because to me at that time, now this is probably a mistake, but at the time I was like, there's too many panels. There's too many panels. I don't want to waste time doing all this other stuff. But yeah, absolutely. So again, depending on the area, they, um, pigeons, squirrels, rats love to build a house underneath these panels because most panels are raised up off the roof you know six six inches or so so a good upsell of that is you could put they call it critter guard but basically it's just like a plastic chicken wire type of material with real small holes and you use these rivet uh brackets that just clamp on to the frame that stuff you could really upsell somebody if they got if they're calling you out all the time because of the pigeons and stuff like that you say hey well why don't we do this service i'll do the critter guard all the way around so they just won't be here anymore they'll just be gone now you only got to pay me for a yearly service um second gutter cleaning which is like i think gutter cleaning is like the king of upsells right it's like works for any any trade you could be a landscaper you can do gutter cleaning a painter i mean anything right gutter cleaning is like the king of all upsells uh, definitely could do that. Now me, I started doing outside sales consulting for a roofing company. So now at this point, I could literally sell roof repairs or new roofs upon getting on the roof and doing a roof. Like, hey, you know your roof. Um, but the most obvious one is window cleaning and even gutter cleaning because sometimes the gutters kind of get crappy. They maybe think they need to paint them when in reality, they just need to be scrubbed down real quick. And the water fed poles are beautiful for that. And actually this, this brush here, the Pure Power this one is actually designed for windows. The one with the boar hairs, boar's hair in the middle, and then the nylon on the outside, the synthetic stuff on the outside. So windows is a great upsell. And keep in mind, if you're trying to do um, volume, I would only offer maybe window cleaning and only say and only do exterior window cleaning. Because once you get on the inside, there's a whole different set of liability risks and just so much more, right? Um, I prefer if they want windows clean, I charge them not much, you know, a little, obviously an upsell, but I want to make it worth it to them. And then I just do the outsides and then they could be responsible for the inside. So that, that's that been a pretty lucrative upsell. And depending on your skills, whatever you have skills at, I mean, if you're on the roof, you notice that they got this tree with these branches that are shading their panels like, hey. I could take that tree branch down for you if again if that's your skill set but the cool thing about solar panel cleaning is it's a low cost service to get your foot in the door to build a relationship with this person to be their go-to guy and technically the paperwork says you're a handyman so if you got other skills man this hundred dollars gets you into the door who knows how much money you could make from these people and how much you could help them absolutely probably one of the biggest you know uh takeaways from the video is that you don't just have to settle for the hundred dollars on the roof but like look around see what else is going on hey do yeah. you guys can help with anything else you know what i mean i think a lot of people get blindsided they look at these hustles like they look at like gutter cleaning or like pressure washing and they're like all i can do is pressure washing it's like no like do whatever makes the money because at the end of the day we're providing a service and we're, we're providing value in in return for money and the more value we're able to provide the more money we're then able to receive so dude i drilled it into my head how could i help this customer right outside right. of what i'm already doing if you if you could wrap your head around all you want to do is help a prospect i'm just here to help and if you could wrap your head around that you'll start to see that other stuff hey i noticed you, have you had anybody out to look at this fence? I know these fence boards are bad, you know, like the last storm. I don't know. I mean, if you just get in the mindset, I'm just here to help this person, 
that stuff you you'll open your eyes to so much another thing is just the questions you asked right because we're a couple questions away from finding out another pain point you know what i'm saying uh mm -hmm. you know do you guys have anything else you guys need help with around the property oh you know i did hate that blah blah blah, blah. like if you just ask the right questions people are gonna they, they want to find one person who does a good job and they want to bring yeah. them and hire them again. So uh, I think it's one of the big takeaways. Tim, what's the biggest job that you've ever done with regards to solar panel planning? Uh, yeah, it was a, so a 1500 panel job. Uh, it's the biggest one that we did to date and it's a uh, contracted. So we, we go back once a year. It's a, a nursery. Uh, they grow mostly almond like trees, like starters, like saplings for like farmers to come pick up the saplings and plant them and harvest them. Uh, but yeah, they got, and they're putting in more. So that's a great client to have. Okay. Excellent. And I think that was a Google client, right, Tim? That came from Google, which was literally, a, that's a free, a free lead, man. And you service them every year. So just a couple key takeaways. We talk about this with every service business, right? Get on site, find where you can offer more value in exchange for more money and continue to service these customers year over year, over year, over year, because, then you never lose. You can never go out of business that way. Like, you know, yep. you see these people that have been in business for three, five years and they don't have any customers and, or, you know, they're struggling. To find, and it's like, how, dude? You've been servicing people for like a long time. Just recycle those customers. They're, they need other services done. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your biggest mistakes that you've made in this business that other people could learn from and, and avoid. Uh, biggest mistakes is in the beginning, I wasn't doing like a pre-site. So I just show up, get on the roof, start working. So what we started doing was carrying a drone, send a drone up, especially, uh, I don't know how much tile roofs you guys got over there, but there's a lot of tile roofs. Now those tile roofs are good and they last forever, but the tiles do break. So we had one particular job where we got up and we've had this situation where we'd get on the roof, accidentally break a tile. So you get down, knock on the door. Hey, you know, I broke a tile. Do you have any extras? A lot of times, dude, they have extra tiles, like almost. And I think the reason is because now you're dealing with, they pass the bill where every new home has to have a solar panel. So a lot of these are new homeowners. And when you build the new homes up from the ground, there's usually leftover material such as tiles. So in our experience, a lot of the times they have the expired tiles. You just go up there and figure it's pretty simple. If you could build Legos, you could fix a tile roof. like one tile you know um if they don't you just got to go get the tile go figure it out man i mean <laughs> so uh my biggest mistake was not doing pre-site inspections and the same thing with the gutter sometimes you have to put a ladder up on a gutter in order to get on the roof we try to avoid that by putting the ladder up only on the rake if that's possible but sometimes you have to put it on the gutter and you know you could damage the gutters but that pre-site inspection, you go through, you take pictures of the area you're going to be, the area, your path of walk before you get on the roof. That way, if something does happen, you know, you don't get blamed. I went and did a job. The guy had three broken tiles on his roof. We went and did the job, but we weren't stressed about it. I was like, oh, there's a broken tile. Oh, we'll let him know. So I take a couple pictures. We do the, do the job. Amazing job, by the way. We get down and uh, the dude's pulling up. So little backstory. He was kind of, a, he sent a lot of red flags in the beginning and we missed it. I've made a video about it, but he didn't, he wasn't being respectful of our time. He wanted us to come at this special time. You know, it was just complicated. So we got there a little early. His wife saw that we pulled up because so we're just going to wait in front of the house till he got home. Like he said, wife comes out and says, Hey, you guys, he's on his way. Go ahead and you can get started. Right. Like, okay, great. So we start getting started. We get on the roof, document the broken tiles, clean the panels, get off the roof as he's pulling up. And he's just like, Oh, I thought I asked you guys to wait. We're like, oh, yeah, but your wife came out and said it was okay. So he's like, all right. And so we're showing that here's the before and after pictures. Oh, man, they look great. You know, thanks a lot for coming out, da, 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 this and that. And I was like, hey, by the way, I want to let you know, do you have any extra tiles? Because you have a couple broken tiles up there. And he's like, well, you guys must have broke them. I'm like, well, we didn't break them. They were already broken. We just want to let you know that they're broken and we'll fix them for free. You know, we didn't break them. And he's like, why would you offer to fix something that you didn't break? And I'm like, just to be a nice guy. I don't know. Just letting you know. And he's like, sounds like something a guilty. And I was like, oh, my partner says, if we broke it, do you think we would tell you? Like, he's like, oh, so you're saying that, you know, you're dishonest. Now you're dishonest. And it's like, it was just so, and uh, you know what prevented the whole interaction would it be a before and after picture, you know, like before we got there, documented it, like in a video, be like, hey, you know, we're setting up the ladder. I'm going up the ladder. 
Oh, I'm going to walk up this way to your panels, but I see that there's two broken tiles there. So I just want to let you know before I get on the roof. And granted, he could argue, oh, he took that picture after, but whatever. But pre-site inspections, dude, is the number one thing that's going to save you a lot of grief in this. Because you could get that one customer that just wants this, is that type of person and just wants to get you. Oh, you bit my gutters. I need all new gutters now because they don't make those. Any, I don't know. Pre-site inspection, man. My biggest mistake was not starting pre-site inspection. Okay, I love it. I mean, obviously, that's something like a lot of people learn, uh, you know, the first time that it happens. Like, I could tell you all day, Tim, you should have a pre-site inspection. But until you meet, until you run into a customer like yeah. that, you don't always have it implemented. Now, within Quote IQ, there are pre-inspection forms. You guys can take all the pictures you want. You can change the questions in there. You can send the customer a PDF before the work begins. Another good thing is like, ring doorbell cameras they're going to catch you come in and like they can reference the timing with that but uh yeah pre-inspections you guys can check that out uh, at quote iq beautiful tim thank you so much for coming on and sharing so much great yeah. information every guest that comes on the channel has picked the word of the day what would you like the word of the day to be uh let's put money dude money okay sweet yeah. Yeah, this part of the video comment down below money and i'll hashtag you're a real one uh but until next time was hard get that money baby yeah.